Hello, in this video, we are going to modify our code to have cosine similarity instead of dot product similarity, something that has been introduced in the second version of Swing Transformer. Okay, let's start. If you go to our Swing Transformer version 2 paper and uh, look at the first figure, and we can see that in version 1, we can see we have this uh, dot product similarity between query and keys, and that is what we use uh, in our code. If you remember, we have a QKV, and you can see the size here. And also we did dot product similarity uh, using this function where the input is Q and K. And we also have this scaling here, okay? But in version two of Swing Transformer, instead of using dot product similarity, they used uh, cosine similarity, which is shown here. And cosine similarity is defined here where which is basically um, dot product between two vectors and it's divided by the multiplication of the length of each vector, okay? So we have this cosine similarity here and then it is divided by tau and they define tau as this. They said tau is the learnable scalar and tau is set larger than 0 0.01, okay? And big is just our uh, relative positional embedding that we had in past so it's pretty much similar to that and uh, we just need to create this cosine similarity and tau in our code okay let's look at our code so first we define our tau like this where we initialize that as 0 0.01 and requires grad true and uh, then we have our qkv and this time instead of just uh, doing the dot product this time we are going to use cosine similarity and our cosine similarity is again a dot product but before we conduct a dot product we are normalizing q and k so here first i normalize q with respect to the last dimension and also normalize k with respect to last dimension so the last dimension of each one of them is this d that is here that 32 that's what matters to be normalized so for example here you can see in our uh, function so i have bhwid dot product to bhwjd it's gonna give me bhwij so we are basically multiply this dimension the d to this d so each one of them needs to be normalized and after we normalize them and we have this uh, dot product then we divide that by that tau value that we just defined here and that is a learnable value and then we just add our position on embedding like pass we send that inside the softmax and then uh, we multiply that to the value so the rest is just similar as dot product similarity the only difference is this section let's look at this value tau again and we can see this value tau uh, is a very small number and the reason is that in cosine similarity when we do the dot product then we are gonna divide by the length of a and length of b and because of that the value of the cosine similarity is a smaller than the value of dot product similarity so to compensate that we are going to divide that with a small number the other point is that they mentioned tau is set larger than 0 0.01 so i wasn't sure uh, why it should be larger or smaller and in the code i just uh, initialize that with this value so maybe you could uh, decide to do something different and uh, make a limit on that to make sure that is always greater than 0 0.01 but for now uh, for this code i just initialize that with 0 0.01 here okay and uh, also we had this uh, q and k normalized we can take a look at one uh, numerical example to see uh, how we are doing this normalization. Let's look at that in our code. Okay, let's consider this numerical example where I have this tensor A and we can print A and we can see its size. And also I'm gonna normalize A uh, with respect to its uh, last dimension, okay? And this is exactly what we are doing for Q and K. And if you look at the definition of this uh, function that we are using for normalize, we can see that uh, here 
uh, this p is just uh, by default 2 and that is the exponent value in the norm formulation so using the second norm for the length of the vectors in our cosine similarity okay so we have that one p2 and dimension is minus 1 let's run this okay we can see our tensor a that's defined here uh, which size of that is a uh, 3 by 3 by 2 so you could imagine that for example uh, we could have multiple different like batch size or number of windows anything else but the last one is that uh, embedding size or d that we want to normalize based on that so now we are normalizing that based on the last uh, dimension and this is what we get with the same size but this time with respect to the last dimensions that is normalized so you can see for example this is the first vector which is normalized the second one normalized the third one is normalized so you can see that second one and the third one are similar because in the original uh, matrix that is two two and one one okay and so on so by using this function we should be able to normalize q and k okay let's now modify our window attention class to include cosine similarity the first thing that we need to add is to initialize tau that as we explained that's uh, we are going to put the requires grad true because this is a learnable parameter okay and then we are going to come here where we have our um, dot product similarity and now we are going to use cosine similarity let's add the code okay now instead of having this section which is for dot product similarity now we are going to have this section which is for cosine similarity the rest of the code is going to be same so I can comment out dot product similarity for now and now we should be able to run the code and see the result okay now we are able to run the code again and get the results and this time we are using cosine similarity instead of dot product similarity 